From hot baths to hot tempers, the Greeks reacted swiftly to the severe austerity measures their former government imposed. They kicked the party out of office and elected a prime minister who was vowing to return them to the way of life the Greeks have come to expect. Some examples of either current or past government spending. Unmarried women get to collect the government pensions of their dead parents. Government workers get bonuses for various things, including if they use a computer at work. And there's a high level of military spending at a time that Greece faces few military threats, even from their nemesis, Turkey. So why are Greeks so reluctant to change their ways? Joining us now from Washington is Nick Larigakis, president of the American Hellenic Association, uh, Institute, rather. The organization is a nonprofit Greek-American public policy center. Nick, welcome to Arise Exchange, and thank you for joining us. My pleasure to be here. Thank uh, you very much. There's no question Greek public opinion is against austerity. 76%, according to a poll this weekend, support the current government. Does that mean this government is going to hold even stronger to their current policies? Well, I think it's going to really depend on how things move forward within the context of the next four months uh, when this government is going to look to try to renegotiate the, uh, the agreement of the memorandum or whatever name they will come up with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and depends on that, come early June and how successful they are, I think that's going to be really the telltale sign as to how successful this government will be moving forward. But make no mistakes about it, because you, you, know, you mentioned it in, within your, your previous uh, guests, this was an anti-austerity election. People were sick and tired of uh, the six, seven years of this economic hardship, and they voted for a party in Syriza and Mr. Tsipras that they felt was going to go to bat for them in a very hard way that they felt the previous governments uh, did not. And uh, that was exactly why uh, this, uh, this party won. There is uh, a feeling, certainly among some Americans and some certainly conservatives in Europe, that there's a sense of entitlement from the Greek people. Can you give us a history of how the government entitlement programs actually began, whether you think they have sort of become too extreme, and if that's a fair accusation to begin with uh, regarding Greece? Well, I think to a degree that's fair, but I think we also got to put it into context. This really began uh, during the decades of the uh, 1980s uh, with the onset of the uh, socialist, pan-Hellenic socialist movement, the government of then Andreas Papandreou. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, uh, you got to remember, Greece is not a country that's a ma uh, major manufacturer. It's difficult to produce jobs. So in, in his way of trying to help within the context of the economy, he felt we need to produce jobs via providing uh, through the government, uh, public service jobs, but also obviously entitlements uh, based on the social ideology. Uh, unfortunately, that did not really serve the long-term needs uh, of, of the country, as we see it, uh, unfortunately, in, in, its, in its current state today. Uh, after now, what, uh, 30, uh, 30 years, 35 years of this, uh, the people have that mindset, and it's that mindset that they need to overcome to be able to move forward in a positive direction. And it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, it took many years to establish that entitlement uh, concept, so it's not going to change overnight. On the streets of Athens, do you think there is a sense of either embarrassment um, for how the situation has played out and where Greece is, or a sense of sort of resistance right now? Well, I couldn't tell you exactly, although I've been, I go there quite often. And last year I was there eight years. I can say this, that uh, at the end of the day, we also need to think, keep things a little bit into perspective. Greece is not a basket case where people, uh, if you walk in the streets, you're going to find people rummaging through trash cans and bumming uh, for money off strangers mm -hmm. that go by. I think, frankly, you can see more of that just visiting uh, various uh, locations here in Washington, D.C. on a daily basis. So Greece, there's a social fabric that has really helped to sustain the country, and it continues to sustain it. Even though it's bent, it has not broke. Uh, but nonetheless, when you have approximately 50%, uh, some, some numbers um, indicate of those who are in their 25 to 30-year-old range who are unemployed, an overall uh, unemployment rate of 20, 26, 28%, 1.5 million people out of work, uh, those are the kind of conditions that, cannot, that are not sustainable uh, for a country to move forward. Uh, and uh, therefore, they are very fed up with this, and they're looking at this government to see if they can get them out of this economic doldrum that they're in. Yeah, you know, I know a lot of Greeks, and they say when they go visit Greece, you know, we hear all of these problems the country has, but just as you mentioned, it feels like business as usual there because, in part, probably because of the social, uh, the social net that the country has set up. Without a doubt. I mean, uh, Greeks in general are one of the... Uh, per capita, largest owners of, of homes have been. 
Uh, for many years, those homes were not being taxed on uh, property taxes the way we are, we are here. They were not necessarily mortgaged. Uh, so all these things and, not, and much more had, had a built-in uh, social economic fabric that built in that continues to sustain, I believe, the, uh, the country today. And, and, Nick, I, and Nick, one final question because we're running out of time. Do you think the Greeks want to stay in the Eurozone and want to still participate with the Euro? Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. But before we leave, I have to make one point sure. because you mentioned there's no threat regarding Greece in terms of its uh, from Turkey. There is a threat, which is why they spend an extraordinary amount of money. It's 2.3 percent of its GDP is spent on defense, which is mandated by NATO. Greece is only one of four countries that breaks the 2 percent barrier of, of GDP for military expenditures. And that's not, and that's not because they want to. It's because there is, a, there is a threat every day. Those of you who follow the geostrategic uh, importance of the, of the area understand that Turkey, on a daily basis, continues to violate militarily through overflights and through uh, uh, and through ships that, that come into and incur into Greek territorial water and Greek territorial airspace. Okay. These are real threats. Nick, very good point. Thank you. Nick Larry Gakis, please come back soon to talk more about this. My pleasure. Thank okay. you.